didn't quite work. It's <laughs> cute. Was, <laughs> I know, she thought it was a little strange, but, uh, oh, but this is old camp. And this is not a spring chick. And this year for Christmas, we're going to talk about Christmas carols and the history of them. I know. And what I'm going to do is I'll fix this so I actually can see it because she drops, she changes the definition on me all the time. <laughs> you might as well make it bigger. I know. But she, no, you make it, you automatically, you, as soon as you touch it, you make things smaller. I'll make it bigger. And, and that's way too big. Okay, okay, we're gonna, okay here's the thing <laughs> that we found out this morning. That a lot of the stuff that people are doing about the Christmas holidays is all canned material. They're they're using the same what script. Mean it's they're right? using the same script all over the United States. You know, they're, they're well, it's TV. the same Christmas carol. No, they're doing they're doing they're talking about Christmas. They've got somebody in some syndication is syndicating a story they're supposed to talk about. This is my personal recollection of Christmas. It's all the same. Every year we do something. It's different. amazing that everybody has the same personal recollection. Yeah. But ours is totally different because of the time. <laughs> we change everything every year. This one, like a, like a, a Christmas carol, also called a Noel, is a carol song or hymn whose lyrics are the theme of Christmas or the winter season in general. See, that's the whole trick. Winter season it has nothing. The carol was never written for a religious purpose. It was so a Christmas carol does not necessarily have to do with Christmas. No. It can be just the season. It's traditionally sung in the period immediately surrounding the holiday, which didn't exist until uh, the 19th century. Is that something? And they may be regarded as a, as a subset of a larger category of uh, Christian Christmas music. So. Hmm. so carols were first sung in Europe thousands of years ago, but those were not Christmas carols. They were pagan songs sung at the winter solstice celebrations as people danced around stone circles such as at Stonehenge. Um, the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, usually taking place around the 22nd of December. And the word carol actually means dance or song of praise and joy. Carols used to be written and sung during all four seasons, but only the tradition of singing them at Christmas has really survived. Yeah. And actually, I went to a winter solstice party last night. Yeah, which was not much of a winter solstice party. There was no, there was no druid ceremony. Well, they said in the words, of, they said, oh, you came for a druid ceremony? And I said, yeah, where's the altar? <laughs> I can guarantee you, I have um, a, a, a friend that's basically into the Druid thing heavily. That's Jews, and they're celebrating the Druid. They're celebrating the Druid Christmas solstice thing this week. So I know they're like, well, what about this? What about that? I said, it's a winter solstice celebration. <laughs> yeah, but there's a, a neat thing, and in, in, in uh, 129 A.D., a Roman bishop said that. That a song called Angel's Hymn should be sung at Christmas service in Rome. Another famous early Christmas hymn was written in uh, 760 AD by uh, Comus of Jerusalem for the Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, soon after, many composers all over Europe started to write Christmas uh, carols. Many of the people, not many of the people, liked them because they're all done in Latin, folks. So, uh, so what they did was by the Middle Ages. Most people had lost interest in celebrating the Christmas all together because it was by Middle Ages. Yeah, but it really here's the trick: is it was not called Christmas. Um. It was so uh, okay. Here's the trick: is as we know, as we found out from the Christmas shows, Christ wasn't actually born anywhere near this time. It's either a month before or a month after. Yeah. So how did they? They just they picked it arbitrarily. You know, they of, they aligned it with the winter solstice. With the winter solstice, mm -hmm. like most, most like, like the the one for spring is. Aligned with Easter. Yeah, and the fall Thanksgiving is around with the fall, the fall turning into winter. There, most of the things that you celebrate as Christian actually are all pagan celebrations of the changing of the season, mm -hmm. which people seem to kind of. When you're singing a Christmas carol, it may never have actually been written for Christmas. It could have been written for a, a pagan celebration. So. Yeah, deck the halls. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this was changed by St. Francis of CC when in 1223 he started the Nativity Plays in Italy. People sang songs or canticles that told a story during the plays. Which is right. What the, it's, it's their version of the opera? It, no, it's the version of a, of, a, of a male choir getting together and singing their... Mm -hmm. oh. Because of the, the church. The church. Right. And right. so some of the songs were in Latin because they used to do the church services in Latin, but normally they were all in language that the people watching the play could understand and join in. Because they couldn't sing if they couldn't speak Latin. I speak. I can speak Latin. 
So the new carol spread to France, Spain, Germany, and other European countries. The first specifically Christmas hymns for Christmas that we know appear in the 4th century Rome. Latin hymns such as... The Veni Redemptor Gentile. Written by Ambrose, the Archbishop of Milan, were austere statements of the theological doctrine of the Incarnation in opposition to the Arianism. Oh boy. <laughs> Could be Natus ex uh, parentis. Uh, I love that one. Of mm -hmm. the Father Love Begotten. By the Spanish poet Prudentus. It's still sung in some churches today. Because here it, it basically it goes uh, something like. It's meant to be a bloody big opera type of mm -hmm. That's what it was meant to be. It's meant for you to boom to the back, court, back rooms in a big cathedral. So in the 9th and 10th centuries, the Christmas sequence of prose was introduced in North European monasteries, developing under the Bernard of Clairvaux into a sequence of green stanzas. In the 12th century, the Parisian monk Adam of St. Victor began to derive music from popular songs, introducing something closer to the traditional Christmas carol. Uh, let me see. Uh, then the 13th century, in France, Germany, particularly Italy, under the influence of Francis, as you see a strong tradition of popular Christmas song in a native language is finally developed. Christmas carols in English first appeared in 1426 work of John Atway, a Shropshire chaplain who has 25 carols of Christmas probably sung by groups called wassellers who went from house to house because the wassailing is a, was a really big deal. One of the, one of the, like I said, a lot of the Christmas carols were really like Christmas carols. There were people in groups wassailing. Ah. So they were basically originally communal songs sung during celebrations like harvest tides as well as Christmas. And it was only later that carols began to be sung in church and be specifically associated with Christmas. You know, it makes me think of when I was in Norway. It's like they would just walk through the streets singing. They had the most beautiful voices. And then if you have a group of them just walking around singing, that's what the carols are. Yep. Mm. They gained popular after the Reformation. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, in the countries where Protestant churches gained predominance as well as known reformers like Martin Luther, author carols, and encouraged their use in worship. His problem was Martin Luther basically did, th did things in German, and Martin Luther, as I understand, once again had this big, booming oratory voice. So when he sang, it basically was more like a, you know, Parsis Los! You know, that, yeah, it didn't turn the light on. But, but we have three that comes on, so it didn't come on when I did that. Hmm. It's meant for Monty to turn it on, not me. I like a Desta Fidelis, though. I'll come while you're faithful. Yeah, and it appears in its current form in the mid-18th century, although the words may have originated in the 13th century. The origin of the tune is disputed. The first appearance of Queen of God, rest ye, Mary, gentlemen. The first in a while, I saw three ships and heart the herald angel sings, um, was in Christmas carols ancient and modern in 1833. I know, and it came on a midnight clear, a New England carol written by Emily Sears and Richard Willis at the time. Today, carols are regularly sung at religious services, not anymore because it's basically banned all over, this, um, all over the United States. If you're out of the United States, you can do Christmas carols. I know, and they sing country. them all over the place, and you know, they're, they're not able to do them in schools anymore. No. But, uh, oh, I know, I remember somebody, they were, they were talking about how they had to take Christ out of the song Silent Night. I'm like, yeah. the song... <laughs> I know. But, uh, <laughs> but basically a lot of the songs were, um, you know, like a Vaughan God Watt is a wassling song for drinking, not actually singing carol. But carol carols, well, most people understand, carols were actually meant for dancing or celebration around the fires and stuff. But, uh, but uh, they're not, the word the French carol or Latin carol, meaning a circular dance, in any case, the dancing seems to be... Uh, uh, have been abandoned quite early. No, they still do the dancing. It's basically, haven't you seen them? Go no, no, go no further than to Dickens' Christmas Carol. What is done in the Christmas Carol? Mm -hmm. His, the, the families are dancing. They may be politely dancing, but they're dancing to the music. So it, it has never actually been abandoned because everybody will like circle hands and you know, and then you know, move back and forth. That's called dancing. Mm -hmm. So. You know, traditionally, carols have been blessed based upon medieval chord patterns because it's the only thing they could, you know, like ding, 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 uh, that gives them the unique character of musical sound. Some carols, like Prasanna Hori, uh, are good King Wenceslas, and the Holy and the Ivy can be traced back to the Middle Ages. So, mm -hmm. we got lots of history for you folks. We got church and, uh, oh, 
composition continued to be written and became popular. Carol's friends, so many of the carols written by Alfred Burt are uh, sung regularly in both scarce and second of and are among the better known Christmas carols, which means they're not meant to, they're, they're basically universal. They, you don't have to sing, these songs are not necessarily meant for church. They can be saying, you know, popular people sing Christmas music, but they have, uh, you know, I, I can't do you more than, uh, you know, I can't, I can't even do that because they'll sue the hell out of you if you, if you rock one of their songs or somebody else's music. So. Mm -hmm. So almost all the well-known carols were not sung in church until the second half of the 19th century. Hymns ancient and modern in um, 1861 to 1874 included several carols. Isaac Watts, the father of English hymnody, composed Joy to the World, which has become a popular Christmas carol, even though it's widely believed that he didn't write it to be similar to Christmas. It's also Joy to the World, Joy to the World. So it basically oh. also all the kings. Yeah, they basically it's a pop Joy song. It's a very big see. pop song by an awful lot of group folks. I get away with it. I see a few like, a few things like can do that. So. That's why I said it again. Yeah. Um, Charles Wesley wrote text for at least three Christmas carols, of which the best known ones originally tell "Hark, How All the Welkin Rings," which is later added to to "Hark, the Herald Angels Sing." which is what most of us know it by. And a tune from a cantata written by Felix Mendelssohn in 1840 was adapted by William Cummings to fit Wesley's words. This combination first appeared in hymns ancient and modern in 1861. And what most people don't realize is Silent Night was an adapted thing. It was a poem written, you know, it, it was not, a, it was adapted for guitar by a, but it, it, was, it was Silent Night, oh, all is right, all is right, round young virgin mother and child. See, that was a poem, that was not a song. Mm -hmm. It's really a great looking piece of, you can, okay, I've seen people like no less than Charles Bronson reciting it. And really, you know, with the, oh, yeah. with the choir behind him, he's just speaking the words. It, it ha it's a powerful piece of written material. Mm -hmm. So episodes described in Christmas carols, and of episodes, apart from the birth of Christ itself, such as the Annunciation, the census, for example, Gabriel's message, the census of Quirinius, a rare subject but touched on in like, on a day when men were counted. You know, the United States, I mean, there's a lot of things. The visit of the Magi, uh, the Star of Bethlehem, Star of the East. Uh, the adoration of the shepherds, all of these things, you realize three that, kings. Yeah, all these three kings. All of these things are basically, um, people look at these things, you know, God, you know, there's lots of, this is what it gets. There's religious connotations. They were all wrote before there was religious connotations in them. They took pieces that they knew and they put, they made it into music and then, they, they, in the, when they decided to start celebrating Christmas in the 19th century, they all of a sudden became Christmas carols with religious connotations, and that's well, where they got like, all the stuff out of. Like Good King Wenceslas was all about a feast. Yeah. Ding dong, merrily on high, or I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Actually, it's just talking about bringing ding the church bells. Ding dong, ding dong. It's basically also, you know, they're ringing the bells. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. That's the fact. Ding dong. And there's no music. You're singing to the ding dong. Ding dong ding. It's, I think that's neat. I, I did that once in a television special where they had the, the church, they had the people that basically made their living making music with the church bells. Mm -hmm. They were in the back. Ding dong ding. And then they would go ding dong ding dong. It's a, yeah, I, I lived in the era when, before political correctness, when I used to make money singing in Christmas specials. They lost. I sung a dance, got off a lot of it in the 50s and the 60s. And when they went politically correct, they cut out a lot of work for a lot of people. They didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. The 19th century acquired just discovered early carols in museums. And according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, about 500 have been found. But many are washing songs, and many are a mixture of Latin and English. The most famous uh, of these, I don't know where I'm at now. Um, I, I, I have no clue. The most famous survival of these early Iconic carols is the Boar's Head, allegedly been sung by the Christ Church, Cambridge, Christ Church in Cambridge since 1607. Allegedly means it really can't prove it. 
Mm -hmm. um, some of this was wrote by, you know, some song being illustrated by Thomas Hardy. Um, Singing Carols of Church was uh, instituted in 1880, folks. 1880, not back when you think so. This is a modern thing. It's not a, a historical thing. In uh, in the Turo Cathedral, Cornwall, in England. See, this is like I said, it's a Western thing. It's not. A, it's not really a Catholic thing. It's a Protestant way of celebrating Christmas. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Uh, we got before Carolyn before carol singing in public became popular sometimes official carol was called waits they were bands of people led by important local leaders such as town leaders uh, who had only power in the towns and the, and the villagers to take money from the public if others uh, were sometimes charged as beggars they were called waits because they only sang at Christmas Eve the something known as watch night or wait night anybody heard that that, that you know the night watch you know, that's basically where that came from. The night one, the famous painting, the, I guess the Flemish painting. So, I know. I, I'm old. I know this. Let's see. And there you go, so. So, okay. Also, at this time, many orchestras and choirs were being set up in the cities of England, and people wanted Christmas songs to sing. So carols once again began to be popular, and many, good, many new carols, such as Good King Wenceslas, were also written in the Victorian period. You know, here's the neat thing is that a lot of the characters were from classical music. They had nothing to do with Christmas, but in their film. So in the 1680s and 1690s, two French composers incorporated carols into their works. Was, I mean, it's just like incorporating a style of music in That's a way. Right. And Louis Claude Duckin wrote 12 Noels for organ. Marc Antoine Charpentier wrote a few instrumental versions of Noels. That's one major choral work, Messe de Minuit pour Noël. Other examples include um, basically uh, Ralph Vaughan Williams' Fantasy, A Christmas Carol, Victor Hay Hutchison's A Carol Symphony, Benjamin Britten, a, a, symphony of, a Ceremony of Carols, Christina Britton's poem, The Bleak Midwinter, was set to music by Gustav Horst and Howard Drake. Horst composer uh, Pendaski exclusively wrote The Christmas Carol Silent Night in his second symphony. Uh, also, here's what you got to understand too. Handel's Messiah was an opera. Oh, it was. Yeah, and some of these things were straight from operettas. You know, I mean, even Sigmund Romberg, the great American, op you know, opera operetta performer, created Christmas music that wasn't necessarily Christmas music. Hmm. So in Austria, Belgium, and Germany, Christmas is celebrated by some of the children dressing as the three kings carrying a star on a pole. Um, going from house to house from New Year's Day to January 6th, children sing religious songs and are called star singers. You know, which is a shame because it's not allowed in the United States anymore because um, it's politically incorrect to do mm. that. So, um, they're often rewarded with sweets or money, which was typically given to the church or local charity. So, uh, Oh, we've got Christmas carols by countries. There's a tradition of carol that was by candlelight in Australia and New Zealand. Carol, uh, it's, it held Christmas Eve in capital cities all around those countries. And just go down the list. Uh, uh, France, 16th century carol. Uh, in France, uh, they go uh, back to the 1500s, though. Yeah. With the French carols. Where the other ones, you're looking at the 1900s. Remember that when we were doing our Christmas special last year, I had a hell of a time finding English transitions to some popular Christmas music because it's not saying in English, it's saying mm -hmm. in French. So that's why we got a Frenchman to help us, I think, because he could speak the language. Well, and then you're looking at Germany and Austria from the 1800s. Do you know things like Silent Night? Which was uh, a still notch house notch, which is Silent Night, Holy Night, because it's Silent Night is not actually the title of the thing. It is Silent Night, O Holy Night. Mm. Still, still, still. The Australian folk song from Salzburg, and O Christmas Tree, O Christmas Tree, O Christmas Tree. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Brown's song, folks. Oh yeah, everybody remembers it from there. And in Greece, um, Greek tradition calls for children to go out with triangles from house to house. You know those, they use a triangle to sing a play? You know, they sit there and bells, right? they make, really, okay, you can make a triangle. Triangles, most people don't understand, they come in a variety of tones. You've got little ones, the big ones, and each one produces a different tone. And when they sit there and do it, it's like playing a care, uh, you know, it's the one time of the year when you can play bells and triangles and get away with it. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the carols for the winter festive season, there are also springtime or Lenten carols. 
commonly called the carols of Lazarus, sung on the Saturday before Palm Sunday as a harbinger of the resurrection of Christ to be celebrated. Because they're not Christmas carols, they're celebrations of seasons. Mm. Uh, we got, in older times, caroling shall be asked for, we're given edible gifts such as dried fruit. Caroling is also done by marching bands, choir. I used to do that, I mean, God, we, I was in a marching band, and we'd go out and we'd go, you know, you go, da 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 and we would basically, uh, it, I, that was how, okay, here's the neat thing is that most of the big bowl, bowl stuff is done during the Christmas holidays. Mm -hmm. So we would always bring out, you know, da 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 And then the people go, what happened to the marching band? Because that's when we, that's when you go, Horn sections really loved it, and the drum, they actually a god awful lot of this stuff is meant really plays beautiful with marching entrance because it's big oh, it brass and trumpets. Mm -hmm. the, so here's part of it is that many carols are regional. I always think of them as in church. Uh, but being popular in specific regions but unknown to others, whereas some are popular throughout the two countries. Yeah, like we can't even speak Russian, so our turkey, so we're in trouble with those. Oh, my Father Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Father Christmas. First Miss, Christmas, First Miss. That's Father Christmas. From that's from Peloponnesian. Yeah. Good to see Kale Hesparan as Konus. Good evening, Lords. Constantinople. Constantinople. <laughs> I know, even I can't even say these. Okay. The oldest known carol is commonly referred to as the Byzantine Carol, Byzantine Greek, which I cannot you can't read. pronounce those. But it says, God who has no beginning descended. Basically, that turns in to be, uh, anybody under know what that also goes to? What? Handel's Messiah. Oh. That's part of Handel's Messiah. God, you know, and, uh, if you listen carefully, part of the lyrics of Handel Messiah, a God who's no beginning descended. That's oh. part of Handel Messiah. Now this one was dated back to the uh, beginning of the Middle Ages, like 1000 AD, yeah. which actually would be the earliest one. Now it's coming out of Turkey. Yeah. But the form, but most carols follow a more or less standard format, and they begin by exalting the relevant religious feasts. We proceed off for praises. Well, you know, basically it's a celebration. Yeah. And they're singing. They're happy, right? Yeah. I mean, all of the various carols are almost what they all have in common, though, is uh, we've done this before. De Pintasa Lopez, a 15-syllable, um, 15-syllable I am with a, a cashier after the eight-syllable verse, which basically, I don't read music, so it makes it basically Greek to me, which is what it is. <laughs> It is. It's oh, Greek. I know. it is Greek. I am bad, aren't I? It's all Greek to me. Who thought that the Greeks had a lot to do? The Greeks basically. Do, do, Who would do, think the Greeks had anything do, to do with that? Basically, the, what is the beat? It is the beat for. Do, oh. Do, 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 do. So, generally speaking, the musical style of each carol closely follows the secular music tradition of each region. Well, that makes common sense. Yeah. yeah. You got lots of, you know, uh, Philippine Christmas carols, children are going caroling house to house. Poland. We have long Poland, Poland goes back to the 15th century. Oh, we century. got these. I mean, um, uh, Chopin wrote music that was basically turned into Look for the silver lining in every cloud that drifts by. That's a Christmas song, but it's also. It's also the Warsaw Concerto. Dun 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 dun. So, isn't that neat? I know. Spain and Portugal is nice too. Mm. There's a common poetic practice of uh, poetic and musical form of the Iberian Peninsula and Latin America, popular with the late 50s. And many move things that I, I lose on. <laughs> with the decline of popular in the Middle Coast in the 20th century, it's term became reduced mainly to Christmas Carol. See? Christmas Carol is actually a modern, no matter what they say, that it, 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 is, it is new. It is not, by historical standards, of Christmas, the term Christmas Carol is something that basically was tagged on to a form of music done in a certain, like a, a Shakespeare, a Remit Printometer. Everything is supposed to be done in this way. So, mm -hmm. the United States is the big one for us, though. Yeah. 
but you can do actually most of this town you can't do uh well, actually we did away in a manger i always want to call it away in a manger but i always screw that one if we did last year we did an original we did a new a brand new arrangement of way in a manger it was beautiful and you can't do more than jingle actually warner brothers will sue you if you do anything on jingle bells and you can't do anything on rudolph the red nose ranger or santa claus coming down so well and you know one of the things that we did discover when we were doing this is that maybe the words might be in public domain because they're historical. Well, the arrangements are not. The arrangements, you cannot, uh, you can't. If you do it like that, it gets you in trouble. Or that gets you in trouble. So if you are, so what you're stuck with is uh, you can't do an instrumental to Silent Night because that's what you arrange with somebody. So basically, the only thing you can do is, like I said, Silent Night. Oh. All is bright, all is right. If you put music behind it, they can sue the hell. It's called, uh, we have a problem called digital rights management in this country, folks. Mm -hmm. So, but, but uh, you know, but if I could, if I could, if we take a long way around to tell you that what people are condemning as being uh, religious in nature, for the most part, were never meant to be religious in nature. That's mm -hmm. something modern that they did because the, the churches the, the churches liked a lot of the music and they went in. Churches, most churches have choirs. And you want to do religious music, although a lot of them will basically like... <laughs>